Hello, welcome or welcome back to True Seekers Tea. My name is Kate and I'm so thankful to have you here for today's Pick a Card reading. We're going to be looking into what you don't see about the person on your mind or your person. Um, we're going to be looking at what you may be also misinterpreting about them. So we'll have a side-by-side -side comparison of your interpretation of your person um, your feelings about them, your feelings about the situation with them, anything else that comes through, this will all be from your perspective. And then we will have spirit lay out the objective truth or maybe highlighting certain things that maybe you're missing about the person that you have on your mind. So I'm hoping this reading can give you clarity and help you figure out if there is any illusion in the connection and kind of just ground you into um, whatever spirit wants you to know. So there are three piles to choose from. For pile number one, we have the Cosmic Slumber Tarot with the Black Obsidian Crystal. For pile number two, we have the Mermaid Tarot with this Blue Calcite Crystal Palm Stone. For pile number three, we have the Pastel Journey Tarot with this Clear Quartz Heart. So go ahead and take what time you need to figure out which pile you're feeling the most drawn to. I will have the timestamps so you can skip to your pile down below. We will be doing an extended reading and we'll be asking Spirit what else is most beneficial to go into um, if you do feel like you are really resonating with it. So without further ado, I think that is all. I'll have any information about the decks if you guys are curious down below as well. But I think that's about it and so I will see you at your pile. Hello, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. If you chose the Cosmic Slumber Tarot and the Black Obsidian Crystal, this will be your reading. Sorry if I pause. There's just, it's raining outside and it's just, there's some loud noises coming from out there that distracted me. But anyways, I'm excited to get into this reading. Um, I went over the details in the intro, but just a quick recap is we're going to be looking at your subjective perception of the person that you have on your mind. Um, anything about the connection, whatever comes through, um, we're going to be highlighting that on the left side. And then on the right, we're going to be looking at what the objective truth is about this person um, to help you understand whether or not there is any confusion about them, if you're seeing them accurately, or whatever you may not be seeing about this person as well. So I think I'm going to title it what you don't see about them, hoping that the right side can kind of highlight anything like that. But okay. Without further ado, let's get into it. Spirit, please have me into those. Pick pile number one. What is their perception of the person on their mind and the situation with them? How are they perceiving this person in regards to their feelings, thoughts, the dynamic of the connection? Pile number one, what is their, we have the Eight of Pentacles. We have the Seven of Wands. We have the King of Torches, which is the King of Wands. So right off the bat, I would say that, um, oh, I might actually zoom this out a bit, sorry. Was I might need some more room in my water of the view. All right, so what's coming through right away? Um, I think you view this person as someone who is very dedicated to their work, their craft. You may feel like this is someone who is independent or very um, strong in their opinions. I feel like you see this person as someone who isn't easily swayed um, or they at least come off like they're very protective about their values and like what they do for a living or what their interests are. There's just a feeling of independence and a strong vision. So I feel like you think this person with the King of Wands, I feel like I'm getting a very ambitious energy from these. Um, they could have fire in their chart, Leo's, Leo's, Leo, Sagittarius, um, and Aries. But yeah, this person may come off a little bit defensive sometimes, or um, they you may feel like this person has a little bit of a competitive nature to them as well. We have death. 
How's pile number one perceiving this person? All right. We have the Queen of Pentacles. We have the Two of Swords and then the Four of Swords here as well. Okay, at the back of the deck, we have the Six of Swords. I was literally just about to say, okay, so what I'm seeing is that you um, feel that this person has maybe moved on from a time period where maybe there was more self-doubt. So I feel like right now you see this person almost leveling up and letting go of situations, um, people that no longer serve them, especially in regards to where they focus their energy or their craft. I feel like this person has developed a sense of stability for themselves. Maybe since you, it's like you've seen a progression of this person. Um, with the two of swords here, I feel like maybe originally that when you first met them or you've observed that at certain points, they seem to Maybe this person used to actually be a little bit more swayed by other people's opinions or used to not have self as much self-esteem, but there's a feeling that they've healed with the Four of Swords. It's like they used to be more influenced by other people's perceptions or opinions or advice, but it's like this person has spent a lot of time from your perspective alone and just sorting through their own thoughts to figure out their vision for their life. So I feel like you're seeing this as someone who's made a lot of transitions, who's transformed, especially with death here too. It's like you maybe have seen this person rebirth and I would say that the rebirth version of them, sorry, I'm just about something tangled, um, is one where they've been moving away from choppy waters. Um, so I feel like this person's really been transitioning from your perspective. They've been transitioning and grounding themselves in a vision that they're more confident about and where they aren't as easily swayed or manipulated by other people. So Let's get into some of the tarot or some of the oracle cards. Yeah, time to go. Happy, happy. You see this person walking away from things that no longer serve them um, and becoming more aware of what their values are, what their morals are. So they, they feel more confident about speaking up for themselves and putting their energy into people, places, and things, endeavors that um, really align with them and give them a sense of stability and self-esteem almost like a sense of self how else is probably one viewing this person or what do they see about them yeah we have happy happy you may think that this person um has made strides towards um being happier like i feel like maybe you see this person being in a good phase of their life um you feel like they've turned things around for themselves um they're prioritizing themselves and they're almost also there's an energy here of someone who maybe didn't realize when when they're putting energy towards situations that really didn't even serve them or make them happy but they may have been too afraid of consequences to stand on their own two feet and follow a path that ultimately was empowering for them but i'm seeing that this is something you see about them now is that they are doing that What else? We have yin. Oh my gosh, I just saw, um, what did I just see? I saw new life here. So yeah, I'm definitely seeing that they see you on some sort of new beginning. We have messages in a bottle. Yeah, there's a feeling of this, per or this person, now I'm saying, but you see this person as um, being more able to listen to red flags and listen to their intuition and kind of follow their path in a way. Um, for some of you guys, I definitely think that this could be your own energy. So what I mean by that is it would be the case that someone could be asking about you and this is like that, like them getting an explanation about you. So if this sounds like your own energy, be aware that that's definitely possible. So it's just up to you if you are curious to hear about it. Um, from another person's perspective, what they're seeing you. And um, you would have to just intuit who this person would be that would be seeing you this way. Um, but now we're going to look at what you may misinterpret about this person, maybe what you don't see. Actually, let me get a couple more oracles. I'm going to use this little deck here. Yeah, look at this. Self-indulgence, focus on self, um, self-worth, time to heal, shadow work, self-appreciation, and the runner. So um, you may feel like this person moved away from you. They may have, yeah, they may have moved away from some sort of chaotic situation that you knew them from. Um, 
you see this person as getting like rest. I feel like you imagine this person spending time connecting with themselves and like almost making like a vision board or something or really considering like what their values are in a way as well. What else? How, how are you viewing this person sub or subjectively? We have clock needing time takes time, time to heal progress. Yeah. It's like, you see this person healing, um, taking the time they need to rest and, and get clarity on what their path is. Like you felt like this person has needed time to, to really heal time to heal and make progress in their life. Yeah. We have boat receiving what you need progression, arriving, moving on closure. And then healing heart at the back of the deck. Um, healing from a heartbreak, freedom from toxic relationships or addiction. Yeah. So this, you're definitely seeing this person moving away from any like self sabotage or, um, yeah. It's it's like you see this person making changes where they are able to receive more, and it's like you see this person moving with the flow more and like not kind of fighting the signs that they're getting, more in tune with their intuition as well. All right, so now we're going to go into what the objective truth is about this person, maybe what you don't see about them, maybe what you misunderstand, if there is anything, or maybe you see them pretty accurately. What is the objective truth of this person with the king of pentacles with the five of swords with the six of cups we have the two of pentacles the two of wands And the Ace of Cups. The Queen of Pentacles at the back of the deck. So we have the Queen of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles. Okay, so something coming through right away. Um, this person maybe is um, has a partner. That's just a random like situation coming through that's possible. I feel like you guys would know about that. Or maybe you guys have been curious if this person has a partner, I am getting that there may be like a counterpart energy here that this person, um, yeah, and look, there's like another person's hand here as well. Um, yeah, I I'm seeing that this person maybe is on to a new emotional beginning with the Ace of Cups. Um, I feel like there's soulmate energy here. And I feel like with the Five of Swords, I feel like this person has been extremely careful with who, who they have let around them. There's a sense of this person's main priority. I feel like if anything, you're seeing them in a little bit more of like a, like a, what's the word? Like, like a, like in a charge energy, you're seeing them a little bit more defensive and like extremely guarded and like very, um, very moved on and also healed. But I feel like what I'm seeing here is that this person is still working on balancing out, um, what happened in the past. I feel like they still feel affected by um, relationships they've had in the past and and almost like subliminal messaging is what I'm getting. Like it's like this person has really taken in a lot to their subconscious about themselves and about like self-doubts and this person has felt very rattled. And so there's this sense that I almost feel like they're trying to gain stability and balance in their life. If anything, it almost seems like you see them as having um, I don't know. It's almost like you're seeing the process a little bit smoother, but what I'm seeing over here is that this person has definitely had to work to get to a place where I want to say their mental health is in a good place in general. Yeah. Three of swords. Yeah. It's like this person I think still is carrying some, some wounds with them. Um, I do feel with the two, this person right now is trying to be very um, strategic in the sense of what they prioritize. So what I'm really seeing is that it's almost like this, you may think that this person has like a thought out vision for their life or that they're very sure almost in a way, but I feel like this person's actually taking it day by day and step by step. And they're more in like the um, 
planning and prioritizing stage of their life right now. Um, and I feel like they're on to a beginning here. Um, they're not as settled in potentially as you see them as well. Um, yeah, it's like this person is in this phase of remembering who they are and trying to just decipher who the right and wrong people are for them in their life. Um, I'm going to get some Oracle cards just to clarify. What is it that pile number one maybe um, isn't seeing super clearly about them or is there any misinterpretation that we can clarify? Yeah, we have the exchanging gifts. So like this person's main priority is making sure that they're the relationships they have, that there's like an equal energy flow in them. It's like a huge concern for them. Um, this person hasn't left, I don't know, like hasn't left this scenario as unscathed or they aren't, they're still working on finding balance. They're still working on figuring out, yeah, look, we have time for a nap. I see this person in somewhat of a winter of their life and in this energy where it's like they're not in this go-getter stage yet. They're, they're in this energy of um, recuperation and trying to surround themselves with like loved ones and people that they really trust is what I'm feeling. Yeah. And then we also have imagine. So I don't know. It's kind of funny. And we also have here and now. Yeah. Which very much confirms like it's like this person's very much in the present moment. Yeah. Working on communities underneath, making sure they're very sure about their intentions and the people around them like soulmate. Yeah, they're very focused on having people around them that um, really support them and aren't going to switch things up on them is what I'm really feeling. Um, and so with this King of Pentacles, I, I do sense that this could be, yeah, like a relationship or a significant other that's maybe helping them with this. And I see this person very much in this beginning stage in their life. Um, so it's kind of similar, I guess, to what you see in them. Let me see if there's anything else that comes through the Oracle here. I feel like you may think this person is very like almost because with the seven of wands being there, there's a sense that you may feel like this person could even be like not standoffish, but almost like like they they're more confident in themselves or more more fiery like I feel like you're sensing a more fiery energy for this person I'm getting more of a grounded energy like an earth energy from them where it's like it's not that they're um and then with the eight of pentacles here it's like you're almost seeing them as in this like energy that feels almost um I'm imagining like a movie scene where it's like almost like like someone training for like a boxing thing like just you know the energy of a kind of movie where it's like supposed to be inspirational based on the person's strength and like how much energy they're putting into something I almost feel like you see this person being like that or something or like kind of being more I don't know sure of where they're going and confident and almost like if anything like protective of themselves if anything they're they still have self-doubts right now that I feel like you're not really seeing a hundred percent um, and they, they are just, if anything, trying to stay in the present and try to make sure that they're visualizing what they want to change for the future. I don't feel like this person has fully moved on or is fully healed in the sense that you may be perceiving it. That would I say is the main thing. Also, I do think that this person worries about the people in the past that they have, um, maybe had falling out, had a falling out with, I think this person does hope for, um, reconciliation in the future. Like, I, I feel like you maybe think this person's very guarded towards you or standoffish, or maybe isn't really like interested in you at all, but there's a sense here that I do think that maybe they're, they're holding back right now because they're just trying to focus on like the priorities and like what they have going on in their life just to stay afloat is what I'm seeing. Um, I feel like you almost see that they're already like in a mastering some kind of skill. I think if anything, they're just trying to stay afloat, um, trying to surround themselves with the right people. And I also think with the six of cups here, I think what maybe what you don't see is that this person has more sweet feelings towards you than you may think right now. You may feel like this person is completely done with you or completely no longer cares for you or something, but there's just this sense that they do imagine a day where there could be a renewal here is something that I'm also seeing. 
Um, but I feel like they're focusing on like grounded relationships. So if it isn't even like a um, significant other, I'm just seeing that with the Queen of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles. I just feel like this person's really working on their Queen of Pentacles energy, which is that stability and that sense of confidence and groundedness. And, I, and you also see that here. But it's almost like you're see, you, you may be interpreting that as like, I'm better or like I don't associate anymore with like the past or something but instead it's like more like this person is hoping that in the future there could be an opportunity for um genuine love again and like expression of love um but right now they're just needing to focus on situations that are very guaranteed and very um almost safe is what I want to say um cuz I think when it comes to this person's heart I do feel like their heart chakra is a little bit blocked off or um for right now it's like they're not completely stable I would say within their heart space and so they're really appreciating the people around them that are very consistent and stable and like don't require them to be too emotionally vulnerable or or they aren't the kinds of people that it's almost like this person staying away from situations where there's like a lot of passion or ups and downs. It's like they're focusing on a really sweet kind of love, but I am also seeing that they hope that there could be some sort of a reunion with the six of cups. So if this is someone from your past, especially if this is someone like you've maybe feel like left you behind or is completely wants nothing to do with you. I'm, I'm not really seeing that. It's more like this person is being very careful because they need to be, because they they genuinely feel like they're in a vulnerable place. It's not coming from a place of pride or a place of um, like demonizing you or seeing you as like the problem or something. It's more like I'm, and then I'm hearing it's me. Hi, and the problem it's me. It's like this person is taking accountability for maybe what happened in the past, and they're trying to plan to to avoid scenarios like the one that they may have experienced with you or like in a time period where they were more interacting with you is what I'd say. So what else spirit would you want to highlight that maybe is not as clear? We have paradise, happiness, expansive, joy, playfulness, oneness, ha enjoying each other. Yeah. So it's almost like what I'm feeling is like vacation. You know, when like you're on vacation and it's like, you're not going to stress out about your bills or something. It's like, there's an energy here of like, it's like this person hasn't fully processed everything yet, but they are trying to, for right now, stay afloat and just focus on the basics. And, and what I feel like this means is not diving too deep into the emotional depths and how they feel about the people from their past or maybe whatever happened here. Um, there's just a sense that they're just trying to f bring in more happiness and genuine, like pure kind of energy around them right now. Yeah. Okay. So we have, um, the hammer and then the snake. So it says sabotage, rebuilding, interrogation, rep repetitive, persistent, working on it. Yeah. Again, it's like, they're trying to repair the damage that was done. So we do have the, the snake competition, enemy, closer, malicious, look over your shoulder, the other woman. So, um, I am really feeling like this person, um, is trying to work on whatever may have attracted certain kinds of energies into their life. Um, if you know that like maybe, for you, this could be someone else that was around this person in the time that you knew them, or it could be that maybe you betrayed this person, just like I'm just going to say. So you'll know who you are and definitely don't take that on if it's not the case. But it's almost like with this competition energy, enemy, like clever, almost like this energy of like a hiding, like I'm getting like a, the snake in the garden, you know, it's like this person wants to create a garden and make sure that there isn't a door open for snakes or isn't a door open for frenemies or people that don't really have their best intentions in mind or that don't really look out for other people. They're, what they're mainly focused on is rebuilding their life um, and, and making sure that the kinds of people that are in their life are soulmates, um, equal give and take, genuine friendship, genuine love, like wishing the best for the other person. And the Ace of Cups is a very pure love energy. And so it's like moving forward, this person is just really focused on trying to, trying to bring grounding with the hammer here. And just like, just, it's like this person is still, I feel like this person, if they had a boat, it'd be that they, there's still cracks in the boat and they're just trying to like, 
at least get it to a point where like the boat isn't going to sink if it goes. It, it's like trying to stay afloat. It's almost like, let's say we just literally want to make the boat be able to float. Like we're not going to go sailing yet. And so there's a sense that that's where this person is at. And maybe you perceive that they are long gone or already completely moved on, um, that they're well on their way in a new journey and that they're already completely happy. And, and I feel like if anything, they're just in a stage of trying to heal whatever went wrong in the past. So yeah, and I feel like this could be one of those scenarios when people are, you know, out of our life, we can sometimes just assume that they're doing better than they are, or, or like, we just feel like they may be doing way better without us or something like that. But, um, and what was interesting is that we had the runner on the back of the deck here, and then we have the chaser here. So um, I, I feel like this person is avoiding trying to chase, like, what what went wrong because i feel like if anything you maybe see this person as being avoidant completely moved on like they don't really care or that they're just done or or even like frustrated if anything it's like this person is trying to avoid falling back into old patterns and avoid self-sabotage and avoid self-betrayal with the chaser it's almost like they're more worried about chasing something and so i do think though that this person in the best case scenario like if they could imagine i'm hearing imagine a world like that you know from ariana grande and it's like They'd like to imagine a world where everyone could be friends. I think this person is actually very um, sweet and like just wants there to be harmony in situations. But it's like, if anything, they're learning lessons on making sure that the right people are around them. And um, and if this isn't another person with the King of Pentacles, I feel like they are working on their own independence, um, standing on their own two feet, standing on their like working on their security, working on making sure that they their root chakra is strong so they aren't um, feeling like this fear of abandonment that makes them stay in relationships that don't really serve them. So, yeah. Um, you know what I'm thinking could be interesting is getting, like, some messages for both sides. Let me just get my message check. All right, so how is pile number one interpreting what this person's message would be? What's the interpretation from pile number one's perspective? We have, I still feel the pain in reverse. It says you were the best thing in my life. Sometimes I hear your voice. We are more alike than I admit. I fantasize about you. You let me down. Okay, I'm going to get the other side and then we can kind of interpret it. So what are some of the messages that this person would actually, or like what is the more, okay, but it says I was careless with you. I miss hearing your voice. Will you ever make things right? I can't reach out. I hope I will see you again sometime. I feel you even though we are apart. And then I daydream about a life with you. So I am getting that energy over here for sure. Okay, so I feel like... You maybe are thinking with, with um, you were the best thing in my life and we're more alike than I admit. It's almost like you were viewing that this person, um, because they have love for you, it's almost like I'm seeing an energy over here of like, like avoidant energy. It's almost like you're per perceiving them as someone who definitely still cares. And so it's funny that you said, like, I was saying that, like, oh, it seems like they've you're perceiving them like they've moved on, but it's almost like you're perceiving them like they've moved on almost in a hastiness or out of spite or out of the pain that they feel. So it's almost like, I feel like you think that this person, although, although they had love for you, it's almost like they deemed that you were something that like they just had to move on from, if anything. And then with you let me down, it's like, it's almost like you think that this person how to really like put you on a pedestal if anything is what I'd say. 
Um, and then it's almost like you feel like this person took you off a pedestal and is now moving on with a sense of kind of disappointment and like clarity about who you are in a sense that's like, like you were the best thing in my life until like I saw the real you. It's like until I put you out, took you off a pedestal. And so you may even be like demeaning yourself a little bit. Um, and then with when we are more alike than I admit, it's almost like, I don't know. It's almost like this person saw their own shadow in you again or something. It's like, you almost think that this person brought you back down to earth. And it's like, although they still think about you sometimes, it's almost like you feel like this person has deemed that that their expectations were not met is almost like what I feel like. And so then as they're moving on, it's kind of this sense of like, never am I going to like think that again about you. Um, I'm almost, yeah, that's what I'm getting there. And then so on this side though, I feel like this person, if anything is with, I can't reach out here. I feel like if this, you haven't heard from this person, there's a potential that like, they're actually taking more accountability for what their side of things were. And I think this person actually doubts themselves and questions, questions themselves um, more than you maybe realize. And so I think this person actually cuts you a lot of slack regardless of whatever happened. And I think that this person's like secret is, is that they do secretly or really want to reconcile with you. They do really want, they do feel your energy they have their feelings for you are still strong is what I would say. And with, will you ever make things right? This person hopes that there's an opportunity or like an offer. This person does actually want you to make things right. They feel like, um, the, yeah, they're seeing where they went wrong. And they're also, it's like a silent hope and like a fantasy that they would be able to, this person hasn't really let go of the image they had of you as much as you maybe think. And so it's almost like you're interpreting it like, they maybe have like a shade energy towards you or like they almost want to spite you in a sense because you didn't meet up to their expectations and now they're disappointed and like, like discarding you almost like a, like how we say that like narcissists do that or like narcissists. So I don't know if you've had narcissists around you that like you're used to this where it's like people like value, like hype, put you on a pedestal, discard, devalue. Like you may feel like this person did that to you, but I think actually they're actually seeing where they went wrong. Um, they do wish there was an opportunity for things to come together in a better way than what happened in the past. But they know for right now, they need to be holding themselves back and just like building the foundation that they have right now um, and kind of staying away from any chaos or confusion is what I would say. So hopefully that resonated. Um, we're going to be looking at what we're going to go into the, for the extended. If you do feel like this is resonating and you want to hear more. I'm so curious to know. I'm realizing with this reading, like, I want to know what happened more with, like, you guys, like, um, because I realized that part's missing a little bit in this, so, um, okay, but let's see. What are we going to go into for the extended reading spirit? We have the Eight of Pentacles, the King of Pentacles, the Moon. We have Justice and the Ace of Cups. Six of Pentacles. I feel like what Spirit wants to go into is um, what could you do? And this is for those of you that like want to make amends with this person, um, especially like, yeah, if you want to see if there's any potential to make this right, um, or maybe if some of you guys do want to reach out to this person or do want to, yeah, try to reconcile with them. I feel like spirit wants to now clarify what what you could do. Like, what could you give to this person with the Six of Pentacles? Um, what's your best route forward to try to make amends with them karmically? Um, what's your guidance on how to make amends with this person um, or how to, like, set the skills right in this situation? Um, especially if this person is with someone else. I don't know. Like, you may be feeling like you want to stay out of it, but you want to, I don't know offer them something. Um, but it doesn't have to be the case for everyone that this person's with someone. It just could be that that's their own energy that they're working on. So we're going to be looking at how, what can you do to balance out this connection and to, um, yeah, 
clarify anything like what can you do to relieve the situation of any sense of imbalance so if that sounds interesting to you and you're following the reading to this point i'll have it linked down below but that's what i have for the youtube if it did resonate it really does support my channel if you can hit the like button leave a comment i love to see you guys have to say about these readings and subscribe so you don't miss the next pick card reading and i hope to connect with you again sometime soon hello pile number two you chose the mermaid tarot and the blue calcite crystal this is going to be your reading we're going to be looking into what you don't see about this person or the situation with this person the connection um especially looking at anything that's a misunderstanding so we're going to be looking on the left side we'll be looking at what your perception is of the person you have on your mind um maybe how you believe they feel how they're perceiving the situation or whatever your perception is is just going to be it's going to be very subjective and from your side so that should be a good energy check-in as to whether or not you are resonating with how you're seeing this person or experiencing them and then on the right side we're going to let spirit come through and bring in any objective information that is maybe not clear to you right now to help you figure out what in regards to your view is accurate and what is maybe um maybe there's information that hasn't been processed or taken into account. So for pile number one, I honestly felt like it it doesn't always have to be the case that you are misunderstanding a bunch in the situation. Um, there were a few discrepancies, but um, for the most part, I felt like in pile number one, um, I'm hearing a strong ringing in my ear, um, but for pile number one, it kind of felt like it was fairly similar. So it's just gonna be different, I think, for each situation. So. Spirit, please tune me into pile number two and their person. I'm hearing that song that's like, and I don't care when I'm with my baby, yeah. All my problems disappear, making me feel like I am somebody. I don't even know the name of that song, and I don't even know if it's relevant, but I'll keep it into account. So, Spirit, for pile number two, what is their perception of their person, the situation with them? Anything from their point of view in regards to the person on their mind? Please allow this to confirm for them that they chose the right pile. We have the devil coming up first. So there could be, like, a very attractive energy about this person. Um, especially with that song that was saying like, like, I don't care. I don't have any problems when I'm with my person. It's like almost like all of everything disappears. And, um, it could be that this connection is one where it may have just felt very intoxicating and like almost the kind of connection where you just want to prioritize this and kind of let everything else fall away because it's almost like that really strong feeling of the honeymoon phase. Um, but I feel like it's almost like can turn into the devil's energy when, when, um, when we're trying to hold on to that feeling that the person gave us and there's this belief that um, they are like the answer to our problems or, you know, kind of like that. So I'm getting that there could have been an energy like that. Um, and that wouldn't be a surprise to you because this is from your perspective. So you may feel very like bound to this person as well. Um, there could be a lot of obsession here too. Just because there's that intoxication element or like that addiction element to each other with the two of swords so there's a lot of uncertainty um you feel like you feel like you almost can't detach from this person but you also don't feel clear about their intentions or where you guys stand or what to do even what else in pile number two's perspective the two of ones yeah so that's just kind of confirming that um there's a lot of uncertainty in this connection it feels like you don't really know what the move is forward or um you may feel like you're missing information you may feel like it's like you want to move forward or you may feel like this in general there's just a lot of confusion about if there is a future like where is this going um is this even possible or practical? It's like, I really want this. I feel like from your perspective, it's like, you feel like very tied to this person. Um, but yeah, there's something, 
in the way though. It's like, you feel like there is this uncertainty or this lack of clarity, especially about them. With the 10 of wands and the tower. Yeah. So with the 10 of wands coming out, this is making me feel like this can even turn into sometimes like a little bit of a burden in regards to like, it's almost like when, um, one second, I'm going to get a sip of water. My throat has like a tickle in it. Um, but it's, it, there's a feeling of what I was kind of thinking when I was looking at the devil is like, it, it gets really hard in a situation where you feel so attached to someone and you feel so passionate about them because over time, if things are going wrong or there could be like red flags, there could have been difficult events in this connection even, or, or things that if you didn't have this connection with them, it wouldn't be so hard to let go. But there's this feeling of like, everything has kind of been toppling on your back or there's a feeling that because of holding on, it's almost become burdensome, but there's still that attraction there that you feel is there between the two of you. Um, I'm going to get one more and then we'll go into the tower more. All right. Spirit from pile number two's perspective. What's going on with this person's connection? Okay, we have the Queen of Swords in reverse. Okay. And then the Five of Wands at the back of the deck. Okay, so I feel like from your perspective, um, yeah, with the Five of Wands, I feel like there's a lot of inner conflict that you have about this person. Um, I Yeah, I feel like this is, I'm hearing it's provocative. Like, I feel like this connection is provocative. I'm hearing like it gets the people going. Um, the, it feels like this is a connection where there was a lot of ups and downs and you genuinely just feel like you do not have your mind wrapped around this situation. Like with the queen of swords being here, it's like, you feel a bit lost in regards to like, I'm just getting this feeling of almost when you know that something isn't healthy or, you know, that maybe you're being foolish or maybe you should listen to your intuition, but it's like, because it's so intoxicating it's almost like addictive. Like I'm just getting this really addictive energy here where it's like, even though you know that, and I feel like for example, like people around you would probably tell you like pile number two, like this person, like look at what's happened. Like look at the track record of everything. Like I feel like it's been very chaotic and destructive and it isn't on a strong foundation. And so I feel like with the tower being here, there could have been tower moments in this connection and it may just be one of those things where it's like so hard to um, let go of because it, it is so intoxicating or it is so um, alluring or you may get sucked back in. It may be like you make the decision to, um, it's like you feel so burdened that I feel like you want to walk away, but then at the same time, you still want there to be hope for the future. You want there to be potential. Um but it's almost like you feel like to be in your right mind, like you feel like you'd be going against your right mind or your logical mind to try to continue with this relationship or build into the future because there's a feeling that whatever you guys keep building with this person, it it isn't on solid ground and, and it ends up falling apart and you may end up taking a lot of the burden of the situation. Um, yeah, and so I like the way you're viewing this person um, cause I'm kind of trying to ask like how you view this person, how you view the situation. It's like how you view the situation, more of the situation is coming through. Cause the way you view the person is that it's someone like you can't get away from someone that you really feel, you almost feel like there must be a reason for the intensity of the connection. Um, but it's undeniable to you that there's been like hiccups and there's been red flags and it's one of those things where it's like, it's so addictive, but you can't really let go. So that, that's just the main energy I'm getting. Um, that's how you're perceiving them and the situation. You're, the way you perceive them, I would say is like, you aren't sure because it's like, they may pull you in or they may be really attractive to you or they may promise things. Um, I'm hearing like promise the world to you. Oh, I'm hearing the song, the Beatles song called girl. It goes, 
She promises the earth to me and I believe her. After all this time, I don't know why. So it doesn't even have to be that this is a girl. I'm just saying that that's kind of the energy. It's like one of those connections where it's like, yeah. And it's like this energy of trying to leave, but then it's like you get pulled back in. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to actually take some of these reverse. I'm just going to give it. Yeah, look, time to go for peace. It's like peace is coming out with time to go because there's a feeling that it's like that may be the only way you can find your peace because it just feels like there's a lot of commotion or like, I don't know, just could be one of those relationships where there's like damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like it's like, it's hard to find peace. You feel like you can't find solid ground with this person. Um, yeah. Okay. What else can we clarify this spirit? Yeah. Look, building blocks in reverse. It's like, you feel like you can't catch any wind. It's like, exactly like with the tower here, it's like, you feel like this is a moment for you to kind of reassess, like, obviously something we're doing isn't working and I can't really ignore it anymore is, is how I would say you may be experiencing this. Yeah, we have TikTok here in reverse. And so I'm even getting the sense that it's one of those things, it's very intoxicating. Like, I can't say that enough. There's just a feeling with the TikTok that it's like, this can kind of talk about that energy that, you know, this reminds me of the example Spirit's giving me a sunny is like, you know, when um, everyone rushed to the store and like got all the toilet paper because like we were afraid that we were going to like run out of toilet paper. So it's like, you have to like rush and go get it. It's almost like, I'm hearing taking time bomb as well. Like there's a sense here of the way you feel is either a, that something about this is like so intoxicating and magnetic that it's almost like there's a part of you that wants to rush to like pick up the pieces and, and piece it together. I feel like I see that part of you, like every time the tower falls, like a part of you wants to take, carry the weight and take the burden on of rebuilding the tower. Um, but there's also a feeling here of almost recognizing that maybe your efforts are futile because it's like after a certain amount of time, it's like you can't rush it or you can't take shortcuts in regards to building something that's going to last for the long term. Yeah. And so there's a sense of time and a sense of um, like time is running out or you've already ignored certain parts of this. Like you've already looked past the fact that um, time is running out and it may just be getting to a point where it's like, if there isn't progress, like I can't keep taking on the burden of this, you know, it's like false promises or just the sense that maybe things would get better. We have community here in reverse as well. And soulmates in reverse. So yeah, you may feel like, I don't know, like there's just something about maybe your guys's, um, oh, there could also be other people involved with community in reverse. Like there could even be um, other obstacles for you guys like that are very frustrating, um, that are making it difficult to build a solid foundation, but it could even be that there's fundamental differences. And this doesn't have to be for everyone, but I'm kind of getting the image of someone who, um, I'm, I'm kind of getting the energy of when someone has like friends and family that don't approve of their person or kind of whisper in their ear. Um, and cause complications. So that could also be something in this. It doesn't have to be for everyone, but there could just be a lot of other voices or other people um, manipulating the scenario and, I don't know, spreading falseness or spreading, um, making it, sabotaging it or making it even more difficult. And if it isn't other people, I would say it is different viewpoints that you and this person have, like different values and butting heads and almost feeling like two different kinds of people or there is literally people around you that make this like more difficult. So, um, yeah, this one came through very clearly. I'm just going to get a couple more to clarify. Can we clarify this energy spirit, please. Okay. We have engagement, partnership, um, commitment. There may even be difficulties in regards to like, you may feel like, you want to build something that's very committed and long lasting. Yeah. With the higher font underneath, um, there may be complications around 
like what the future entails like you got you guys could even have disagreements on like marriage or like one person wanting to be more committed than the other you have a heart with a key and then we also have not today so um it's yeah there's just this back and forth energy where it's like the one like being perfect together and then also not dealing hurt avoiding conversation boundaries still angry so yeah there's just it just feels like there's a lot of contention and a feeling of a lack of progress and a feeling of having a hard time building building anything solid in regards to your connection with this person so i guess a the water Okay, let me get my other deck. Now we're going to be looking at what Spirit's commentary, I guess, is on this. They're going to reveal anything um, that is maybe confusing or um, maybe anything that you're misunderstanding about the situation. Yeah, you may even be feeling like the people around this person are a huge blockage. I'm just getting that. And it's like, how long can I really like deal with this almost? But you want to, of course, there's a feeling of that as well. And you may feel like you're perfect with this person if it wasn't for X, Y, Z. Um, all right. So Spirit, what can you reveal about this situation that would be useful for file number two to hear or understand? We have Knight of Swords. Knight of Pentacles. We have the Queen of Rods. We have the Wheel of Fortune. We have the Page of Rods. And the Four of Wands. Strength at the back of the deck. Yeah, so we have strength, the five of pentacles, and the six of pentacles. Okay, so the first thing I'm getting here, um, I do feel like this person is potentially not on your maturity level. Because with the queen of rods here and the page of rods, with the knight of swords, there's almost a feeling of spirit calling your attention to what like this may be the situation and this is like how you feel about the situation which is 100 percent valid what spirit wants to highlight is that um in order to kind of build this situation that you want to build and also the four of wands also has to do with marriage and like celebration and a strong foundation and with the knight of pentacles being here this kind of talks about how slow effort over time is needed um and spirit is wanting to help you understand what you can take away from this or maybe what about yourself in this situation that would help you so um, I do feel like this is a test of strength here for you because with the strength being at the bottom of the deck, like there's a feeling that yes, this is a situation that is really testing you. It's testing um, your ability to kind of temper yourself and pick the higher road. And so almost like this person may really trigger you and it's almost a lesson of not being controlled by your triggers and being able to stand in your confidence and not undermine your confidence or not undermine your worth um because of being triggered almost so i think this person is someone that definitely gets under your skin in a way because yeah there's something about it that's like very fast paced maybe this person's very impulsive um definitely i could see them being this in and out energy and this person that like keeps kind of changing things up on you and it's like i feel like i'm kind of seeing okay this sounds like an insane thing i'm seeing a merry go round not a merry go round a ferris wheel um that's one thing oh that's probably why because i'm looking at that um but i'm also seeing like someone being attached to, like a car and being dragged by it which sounds really intense but there's a feeling of um there being a metaphor about like this person almost being in the driver's seat 
but it's the feeling that you could untie your foot from being dr like driven around by the car. And it's almost like a part of you and a part of your journey. I feel like where you're learning um, to not let your impulses or like frustrations or like, it's almost this Mars and passion energy that I feel like you're being called to, um, to look at and see where maybe more um, stability and um, I want to say like I'm seeing a card of bring a gentle touch to the situation. I feel like what you maybe don't realize about the situation is that when you are being triggered by the situation and acting on that or feeling, um, yeah, like if you're acting on that in any way, there's a sense that it kind of creates the cycle. It keeps the cycle going. And so I feel like, um, you may feel very helpless in this situation. Um, but I do feel like what you can control is more in regards to you at least getting off this wheel, because I just feel like you're on a wheel with this person where it's like, they say something or they do something and it's like going to have this reaction in you. And there's just this unconscious reaction that takes a hold of you. Um, and it's about breaking that cycle in order to create more stability. A lot of this is about, you may have had a lot of instability in your life growing up is, is kind of what I'm feeling. And so you may just have less intense boundaries around inconsistent things like inconsistent behaviors. And so you may be looking past certain things about this person that someone who didn't have, didn't see that as normal, like wouldn't fall into the cycle with. So I feel like this is somehow triggering this sense of, um, love being something that is unstable or something that is always going to be passionate like this, or always going to be up and down and thinking that's normal. And, but recognizing that a lot of times relationships like that can be just like one person triggering the other person. And then just like, it's like, we're being controlled by our own triggers and our own, um, subconscious needs. And it's like, you're not really in the driver's seat then. And so there's almost this feeling of spirit saying, this is a situation where you are being dragged around, but the way to get out of it is through learning to control your own impulses and learning to slow down the, at least to slow down the process. Because I am feeling like there's kind of this like immature energy. And there's also a feeling here like this. There's also a feeling that, um, it may not be that you're the person who instigates like the immaturity, but it's how you respond to the immaturity. That is something that you're learning, I think if that makes sense. So it's like, you may be so confused as it's like, I don't know. It's like, you obviously see that this person, you see their flaws and like, you see what's wrong. But like the fact that maybe you aren't taking that in and making a decision about that. Instead, you may like decide to argue or try to like prove to this person or explain to them, you know, your point of view, you may even want to change them. You know, like there's maybe a part of you that was used to um, arguing with a parental figure or like trying, like, tolerating a certain amount of like behavior that definitely isn't okay with you but a part of you may stay in that i'm hearing the f fight cycle like um because it's normal or or it's you think you have to or it's like you're taking on more of the burden than you should um but it's recognizing that that is something within you that um you can free yourself from and I feel like once you kind of recognize that you don't have to react or play along, I feel like that's going to bring you a lot more peace and it's going to bring you a lot more clarity on what to do. Because I feel like right now I'm hearing like a rat race or it's just like this feeling of like chaos and quick reactions and um, frustra a lot of frustration. And so I think you are feeling very, very frustrated, but understand how we enable people in their behaviors when like let's say someone let's say like a child does something wrong like instead of like giving like a punishment and like holding your boundary so like let's say someone crosses your boundary and i'm kind of just thinking of parent child scenario so and this may relate to like how you were raised too it's like you may have had a mother or father that was very not very good with their own boundaries. So it's like they were very easy to upset. And so when you did certain things that like upset them, instead of being calm and like 
holding up restrictions and boundaries, they may have gotten really frustrated about it. And then they may have just given up because they were so frustrated. And then like the next time you do it, there's like, I can't even like deal with it. And so does that make sense that there can be kind of an energy here where we get used to how do we deal with people not meeting our needs or not, or crossing our boundaries. And in this case, I think it may be a crossing of boundaries or just like an inconsistency, you know, it's like, what I'm really getting is how do we like get respect from people, you know, um, and understanding that being consistent and sure in the way that you are going to respond to a certain scenario is something that will help establish what is and isn't okay in a relationship and prevent things from going on and on and on. Because yeah, there's a feeling like that in this situation where it's just like chaos because it's like we don't know how to deal with someone acting out. I almost feel like this person maybe acts out or just like, yeah, they may act out in some way. So it's like this feeling of just feeling powerless, you know, to to deal with that, you know? And so I'm I'm really just thinking that there may be like this this way in which we're trying to build something, which is like, intensity but then when we're being too intense and not like holding certain boundaries and like maintaining a certain sense of like respect for each other eventually it's going to fall and you're going to go back to where you were because that's not going to be like real progress you know the real progress is made when okay maybe we don't get to to move together as quickly like we're not going to be super happy because maybe someone had to put in a boundary and like hold the boundary um so it's not gonna be that pleasing to either person it's not fun to hold boundaries and do that but at least it's like slow progress that's actually steady and going to build upon itself. And so I just feel like there's this process, there's this progress that you guys make that invalidates the original problem. So it's like, it doesn't actually fix the original problem or give it a, it's almost like we're trying to, um, it's like, imagine that when we're on the, so like, let's say we're on the up and up where, we just met this person. So everything's really good. Um, we're super passionate. Like everything's good. There's like, we can never imagine how there could be any problems. And then suddenly there's this first problem. And then there's a lot of anger about it and this frustration and just like feeling so betrayed and hurt. Like, I can't even believe this is like happening. You know what I mean? Like I thought we were like this together. And then the other side comes in. And then at that point, what's most important when you have that fall, that tower moment, right? Um, it would be most important to make sure that you don't move forward before addressing what happened in the fall. And I think, and sometimes you guys may try to address it, but it may be a situation where there isn't really a resolution or there isn't really, you're not really getting to the root of it because I, what I'm seeing is that instead of pausing for long enough at that place where you guys need to really figure out like, how do we not go in this cycle again? I think sometimes you guys may remedy the down cycle by having another up cycle, but then the down cycle always comes again. So then there's just this lack of stability and there's just this like constant with the wheel of fortune. I'm getting this like, da, 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 and like standing your ground. And yeah, I'm just seeing a relationship where there's like a lot of, um, like, I don't know, just like shots fired in a way is kind of what I'm getting. And it's like, how do we figure out how to not end up at square one again and again and again. And I, and I do think it is through the moments when it's harder. That's why strength is here when it's a lot easier to just like, let's say we feel so frustrated and we just really want to like forgive them because we just want things to be good. You just want the relationship, but sometimes we need the strength to do the harder thing in the moment, which would be maybe to maintain more distance, um, to not move forward before it's time, you know? All right. Can we clarify this please? I just saw chaos and conflict. We have Yang in reverse. Yeah. And so what's really interesting about Yang coming out here is like, again, there's a feeling that if anything, we, it's like, go, go, go. And so if I had to say that there was like a, think about like balance would be in breath and out breath. The in breath is like the part where it's like the sun and it's happiness and it's that masculine energy. And I feel like you guys get very caught up in this masculine energy where it's all good. But when it's time to like pause and be reflective and, and 
not just do it's like we need to be in a cycle where we're like slowing down and being reflective or not we're not just pushing forward without considering things you know um it's like that there's just there's energy that's like pushing forward pushing forward but everything that comes up must go down you know there's just a feeling of imbalance in regards to yeah energy like that can we please clarify what message we have not for you here in reverse And we have fork in the road in reverse. Okay. Um, okay. So what I'm really seeing is that um, because there can be so much focus on um, making things work or like pushing things forward, um, you it may be a situation where you're not pausing to reflect and asking, is this the right situation for you? Like, you know what I mean? So I actually want to read the not for you in reverse because I feel like that has a really good message in it. If I can find my book, I don't know where I most recently had it. Oh, it's right here. All right, it says, oh my gosh, yes, this is 100% what I'm feeling here, especially mixed with the yang energy. So it says, don't chase after what flees from you. Don't obsess over what eludes you. Don't bang your head against the wall. There's nothing romantic about what is unavailable. No prize given for torturing yourself and nothing to be gained by refusing to see the red flags that have been waving at you since you began your pursuit. Now is the time to walk away. There are other goals, other loves, other games, other successes waiting for you. The way out of a of obsessing is radical acceptance and surrender spirit only wants the best for you this is the sign that you have something much better waiting for you and so i think it, it kind of gets you into this energy with the fork in the road in reverse where you may feel like you don't have an option or it's like you're only it's like i can see that you kind of think sometimes your only option is just to withstand the chaos or um be on this wheel like you almost feel like you're helpless or you don't know what the solution is um but I'm seeing that this is actually an opportunity for you to, to step up and um, to kind of understand um, that it's not going to change un unless we when unless we address this basically. So with the fork in the road in reverse, it says indecision is extremely frustrating and will lead to anxiety, loss, and confusion. Um, at this juncture, you can't remain in the place in place without losing your way altogether. Avoid the tendency to let others choose for you, which amounts to subtle review, refusal to take responsibility. Don't give your power away, not even to this oracle. By not making a choice, you are making a choice for which you must be accountable. If that choice leads to undesirable circumstances, take heart, spirit never tires of giving you second chances. Yeah, and so you, you may just sometimes think that it's out of your control because with the Wheel of Fortune here, this actually does talk about um, changes and um, fluctuations of the universe that like we really don't have any control over and that is a part of life but there is also the other part of life um with the queen of wands here where it's like you are actually able to step up into your willpower and like the king of wands and the queen of wands are like these very empowered influential people that know what they want and they set the path forward and and even it's possible that um when it comes to this yang energy um it may not even be that you feel like you want to bulldoze through it may be that you don't feel like you have a say or something you may feel like not in touch with your own voice or in touch with your own ability to make something happen you may just feel kind of like you're being tossed around because i really am getting that energy of like oh and so this being in reverse could also definitely be confirming that like i'm seeing someone being pushed around by like the waves of the ocean or you know how I was seeing someone driving a car and like your foot just being attached, but realizing that you don't have to give in to that. You have your own willpower and your own ability to decide for yourself and to make a judgment call. And you're, and it may be that you, you think that you're not allowed to do that because what I'm really get like sometimes, especially this is how I'm relating to this and understanding is that sometimes when we have a parent that like, you don't really you don't really have an option whether or not you are going to stay attached to them because you're dependent on them and you need them and so sometimes when there's this roller coaster of emotions of an up and down it's like sometimes as a kid especially you might feel like you have no option but to just ride the waves of other people's 
energy and their decisions and the way that they're being. And, and I just feel like in this situation, um, you may just really feel like you can't do anything about this. But Spirit's saying like that is a learned energy and it's something that like you can overcome. Yeah. And it may even be that a part of you is, is afraid of the abandonment or thinks that abandonment is worse. But yeah, look, we have independence here and recognizing that through kind of standing in our own strength, you know, when people, when we feel left out, we're not going to stay dependent because the six of pentacles for me is about, um, it, it, for me, this this sequence of events right here that I'm looking at is this feeling of obligation to stay involved or obligation to keep riding the wave. But Spirit's saying like you don't, you can get off the wave if you want. You know, um, it's it just sometimes that through our childhood we feel obligated to stay in something and to take on the burden, take on the weight of it because it's like there's this dependent energy or dependent. Either it could be that this person you feel like you understand their, um, their flaws. And so you may like sympathize with them even like there may even be a feeling that like you don't want to abandon them because you do, you do have love for them and you do really, um, you do want to guide them. I even think, but at what cost I feel like by feeling like you have to stay attached, then these persons sporadic actions are what's driving you. And, and that could be really frustrating. So let's get just some clarifiers to match the other side. We have paradise, happiness, expansion, joy, playfulness, oneness, enjoying each other, self-indulgence, focus on self, um, self-worth, time to heal, shadow work, self-appreciation. Yeah. So what I'm really seeing is sometimes you guys may skip to that, the expansive part with like the paradise coming out. It's like, a, I feel like sometimes you guys just want to bypass what issues there are, but really what's needed is shadow work and self working on yourself in that time, instead of kind of just wanting things to be good again, or, or wanting to just waiting for the next up influx. Um, because then you may be missing out on a situation, um, where, where you get more clarity and move forward. Um, yeah. So we also have separation here. So I feel like with this sadness, missing you, thinking about you, yearning, unsure of the future, it may be that because of the fear of separation, you, you may not want to even ask yourself, maybe separation is what I want. I, I feel like there may be a real fear of abandonment or abandoning others or almost letting things slide or, or tolerating behavior that you know isn't good for you or like isn't the best um, because of this fear of separation, this desire to be on the up phase. Because I'm seeing these two like I'm seeing these two opposite spectrums where it's like paradise is the like honeymoon phase and separation is that sad part. But in the middle, I feel like spirit's calling you because you may feel torn between the two, right? Like you, especially with the devil's energy and the two of swords, you may feel like on one side, this person makes you extremely happy and you, and you want that on the other side, you're terrified of separation. Um, but I feel like what spirit's asking you is to pause in between and ask yourself, are you giving your power away by feeling like separation isn't an option? Because it's possible sometimes that when we recognize separation as an option, that's when we really start asking for our worth. That's when we really, once we feel okay with separation, that's when we actually start building relationships that don't bypass issues because yeah essentially that's what I'm getting here. And so I do feel like maybe your perception is that this is a very stuck situation and you just can't seem to wrap your head around it, or you can't seem to get like clarity. And then I feel like on the right side, spirits mainly just highlighting that this sense of feeling like you don't, you're stuck or you can't do anything, um, may have to do with patterns that you've learned. And it may have to do with learning to step into your strength energy. And although you may be afraid, you may be afraid to take space from this person. You may be afraid to stop the cycle. Um, it's, it's realizing you're strong enough to do that. It's quieting that voice in your head, quieting the fears that you have that keep you on this cycle and realizing you do have more power than you realize. Um, and I think slowing down as well would be something that would really help kind of break the cycle here. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm going to go into the extended reading now. We're going to be looking at what spirit wants to go into if you really felt like this was resonating and you're benefiting. Also, um, I do really appreciate if you found value in this video, if you are able to hit the like button. Um, it really goes a long way in supporting my work, so thank you so much. And I also love your guys' comments. I like to get the feedback. Um, but let's see what we're going to go into for the extended. What would be most helpful for pile number two for the extended reading? We have the Nine of Swords, the Queen of Swords. Yeah, I can see that there's a lot of anxiety about making a decision. King of Wands, yeah. Nine of Cups, Six of Swords. Okay, so Spirit wants to go further into detail about how you may have a lot of fears in regards to stepping into your power, asking for what you want, and going for what you want. And so what the extended reading is going to be about is going to be a lot of guidance. So we're going to use a lot of different Oracle, Oracle decks to kind of help clarify maybe where some of these fears are coming from and how we can start looking at them and healing them so we can step into this more empowered and discerning energy and recognizing that you do have the power to, to move away from choppy waters. Um, yeah, I feel like spirit really um, is wanting to help you on this so you can learn to take part in, in connections that are a little bit more balanced and where you don't have to compromise to get what you want. Cause there's just this sense that you may feel like you have to compromise or you don't know if you have the power to stand up for what you need or, or what's going to happen. I feel like there's like a lot of self living, like a lot of fears, like what is going to happen if I do that? Um, I'm afraid of being abandoned if I step in my power. So what we're going to be looking at is what's going to happen if you do step into your power and speak your mind and put boundaries in the situation. What's going to happen with the dynamic? And also any other advice on kind of empowering you and, and helping you see maybe what the blockage is and, and help you overcome some of the fears that you may have in regards to standing up for yourself or standing up for what you need and what you want. So that's what I have. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next Pick a Card reading. And I hope to connect with you again sometime soon. Hello, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. As you can tell, it looks different than usual. Um, I actually already laid out all of the cards and I decided that I wanted to have the full picture for this in order to make sure I was giving you guys accurate information. So I guess I'm jumping in a little bit quickly, but just to give you an explanation, this reading is about what your viewpoint, your subjective view is about the person that you have on your mind. It's your feelings, your accounts of what happened, um, your perception of them and the relationship on the left side. And on the right side, we have spirits, objective view of what happened. Um, and this basically helps us see where maybe we were um, misunderstanding something, maybe we're missing some of the facts, or we were, or maybe not seeing the truth of a situation basically. So um, we're going to start on the left side where we're going to be looking at what your perception is of this person. This will work as a pretty solid energy check-in for you as well. Um, sorry, I just wanted to, I had to go answer the door really quick. So, um, but anyways, there's lots of disruptions in this reading as well. So um, it's kind of interesting, but anyways, so for this left side here, this is how you are perceiving your person. This is how you're perceiving what happened. Um, so it's basically an accounting of the connection in this person from your point of view. So what I'm seeing from your perspective is that this is someone you with the seven of swords here and the five of swords. I ended up clarifying because this is like a it took a second to put it all together, but we have the Five of Swords and the Seven of Swords here. So what this is telling me is that there is some level of red flags, potential deception, or um, someone not being very open with what their motives are. And the way that we figure that out usually is that we'll either catch them in a lie, we'll see them 
doing something that they wouldn't want us to know about or something like that. And so I feel like in this situation, you have seen this person raise a red flag before. But I do think that you may have chalked this up to this person, this person's situation, this person's like self-confidence. You may have thought that they were sabotaging themselves because of like low self-confidence. There's almost an energy here where there was definitely some sneaky behavior that definitely felt like it, you could you could have seen it as this person being selfish and acting in their own self-interest. But I think maybe for some time you may have seen it that way, but there's a sense that there was room for having that perception change or distort almost. And so I feel like when it comes to this person, it's almost like you may have, I think also this is someone that you really feel really drawn to. So this person, I definitely, we have karmic relationship here. And so I think this is someone where there are, this person has triggered you and you feel a lot of draw to this person as well. I feel like this is someone who you are willing to take on a burden for as well. I feel like this is someone who you may have, overlooked with to be fair here in reverse you may have overlooked some offense or some slight or something that they did um you may have overlooked that is what i'm is what i'm seeing and i feel like with the nine of pentacles here in the high priestess i feel like a part of you maybe wanted to hold on to this person with the four of pentacles here as well and it's almost like by going independent or maybe leaving this person behind or like cutting them off or kind of taking whatever happened as a sign that this person wasn't going to be good for the future, that would have been something you you would have done. I feel like if um, if there wasn't a part of you that didn't want to be alone is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that because you didn't want to accept that this person wasn't the right person for you because I feel like you had you have such high hopes that the eight of wands and the ten of cups and so i feel like because of this is someone who you have a you have a somewhat of an idolized view about them in the sense that i feel like there's a part of you that doesn't want to be alone and it's almost like you're willing to put in whatever work you have to put in in order to get this ten of cups outcome which is this happy we're happy together it's emotionally satisfying um and i think the way that you got in your head about this was like I feel like there was a part of you, there was a moment where if this was fairly addressed, I feel like you would have come to the conclusion that no matter what way you play this or the fact that this person even was having some sort of strategy with you or had any red flags, um, and this could have been in the form of them, maybe they were talking to someone else or maybe maybe you just caught them in something, there was something fishy about them, okay? But you also had really high hopes for this person. And so there's a feeling that even though this was putting a lot of burden on you, that this person, yeah, even though this was putting on a lot of burden for you, um, I feel like the way you handled that burden or like, it's like you had two options. Like one of them was to focus on self, self-worth, time to heal, shadow work, self-appreciation. So essentially when someone has some sort of shady behavior, it's like, it's never fun. You know what I mean? It's never like a good scenario to deal with. And so I feel like when the moment came to do that and maybe separate yourself from this person, you maybe even did that for a certain amount of time. It's possible. But I do feel like at some point you may have shifted into wanting to give this person a second chance and basically wanting to kind of not see what had happened deceptively and kind of maybe see it's almost like you're giving this person benefit of the doubt because with have faith love is coming um there's a feeling that it's and look at all these like bow and arrows and like the eight of wands it's almost like as a way of overcoming your pain like or your fear of, of kind of being independent and like not attached to this person in some way or like giving it's like because you saw such a bright future with them it's almost like you got attached to that idea and then now that you were supposed to kind of 
like, or it's not that you were supposed to, it's that when something happens where there's like a red flag with someone, it's like, it can be hard to process because then we have this like cognitive dissonance where it's like a part of us was so excited about this person and really wanted to give it a shot and wanted to keep going and saw this potential outcome that was like so happy. And so I'm almost feeling like the more that you were trying, maybe originally when you found out about something to do with them, it's almost like the more you leaned away from this nine of pentacles energy, this like independent energy, focus on self, self-indulgence, like just, just focus, focusing on self, the more you would have been in that energy, the more your intuition would have been highlighting this. But I feel like because you may have turned away from the independence energy, or you may have even thought that this person needed you or something. Another thing that was coming through is that it could have been that this is someone that, I don't know, you may have thought something about their scenario or their situation. Um, it's almost like instead of attributing it to them as a person, you may, might have started to think like, okay, well, it's just because this person was in a difficult spot in their life, you know, and because they were in a difficult spot, that's why they were sneaking around. And that's why they were in this mindset. And like, I feel like if, if I were able to give enough to this person or take enough burden off their plate, you know, then we could have this happy outcome. And I feel like that, that's been your mentality per, perhaps is, is thinking that it wasn't an issue with this person or, or almost there's a sense that you wanted to take on the responsibility. You felt that if you took on some of this person's weight or supported them in some kind of a way, um, that they would be better then, you know what I mean? That they wouldn't, that you wouldn't have to let go of them. It's like, it was like a way of holding on to this person was basically attributing some, something that they did or, or something that you figured out about them to their circumstance rather than, rather than kind of being wary about the person themselves, because that way you were able to maybe justify what had happened and you maybe wanted to like defend them or just be like, you know, it, it isn't the case that this person is not right for me. It's the case that, the, you know, yeah, there was something unfair, but I, I'm going to like forgive it. Almost. Not even forgive it, but it's almost like there's a part of you, I think that's not, that's having a hard time processing what that would mean about this person. Because I feel like you see them in a positive light or you have really high hopes for the relationship. And so I feel like instead of kind of pouring the energy back to yourself, it's almost like, it's almost like a part of you took on the weight for both of you guys. So when we're in this independent energy, if someone isn't showing up for us in the right way, um, we, that, that's a sign that they're like not right for you basically. And, but sometimes when we're in this energy of taking on a lot of burdens for others, or we're used to that or making excuses or just seeing people's light side or something like that, it becomes easy for us to override our intuition and make excuses or it makes us want to keep dedicating ourselves to a person that's done something. You know what I mean? And in the hopes that a new opportunity could be possible, this is about second chances and regenerating. Like, so like, instead of letting go of the situation, I feel like you decided that you wanted to try to push things in a positive direction. But I feel like that was also something that required you to maybe lean away from what your intuition was telling you and take on more weight in the connection as well. Um, Okay. So yeah. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else coming through. Um, I feel like it's like you kind of just decided to jump to a conclusion, even though you aren't quite sure. Cause with the two of swords here in reverse, there's a feeling that you aren't a hundred percent sure maybe that there was something shady. Like you maybe just, I don't know. It's almost like you decided to turn a blind eye and give them benefit of the doubt. And, and not only that, beyond that, you decided that if this person maybe they acted that way because they are struggling on some capacity. And so I feel like a part of you wanted to take on the burden for them and like nurture them and like give to them. So then, so then they could fulfill what you wanted or like what, what was supposed to happen, this 10 of cups. So, so like only if you were to put in more effort and like help them, then this, this plan is back on track and now we can shift in a positive direction. And, and it's like, you wanted to, yeah, instead of letting go and being like, okay, like this isn't the person for me. I want to like stick to it and, regenerate this person is, is what I'm seeing. So, okay. I'm going to get a sip of water. 
I do feel like what spirit is saying, um, that I feel like you may have kind of decided to keep pushing in the scenario, um, when maybe it was actually time for you to take a pause and reflect on whether or not this is something that's actually supporting you and is for you. Because I feel like with the six of wands here, there's a sense that I feel like you have something that could benefit this other person. Like there's a sense that, I don't know, maybe you have a good reputation. Maybe you people, I don't know, really admire you, something like that. There's a sense that you are like an abundant person and I think you are a generous person. And so I definitely don't want to, um, like question you or, or not like, I do understand wh where this is coming from, but I do think there's like a su slightly self-sacrificing nature where this keeps you in a situation where you're always the giver. And when it comes, it's almost like you're okay with not receiving. Um, as long as that means you won't be abandoned. You know what I mean? And so I feel like sometimes this idea of wanting to regenerate someone or take on the burden comes from maybe a place of being afraid of abandonment. Um, and I feel like you may bypass, you may bypass some of the red flags and some of the pain here um, in order to almost in order to not have to give up on this is really what I'm getting. So I'll explain now with this other side here. So with the Ace of Pentacles and the Chariot, I feel like there's, you guys are very driven and very, um, you guys are the type of people that I, I feel like you guys are just very loyal and like very dedicated. And I feel like you like to see tasks through. And another thing I'm seeing is that like with the Wheel of Fortune here, it's almost like there's a part of you that instead of kind of allowing for this situation to flip flop and, and, and maybe be more disappointing or less fruitful, it's like a part of you wanted with the six of pentacles here in order to continue on this path. And, and, and I got a lot of the insights here also from this, but, I, but just, this is, this is, um, spirit is almost explaining this as like, a chasing dynamic. You know what I mean? That instead of um, maybe surrendering and looking at this person's behavior for what it was and accepting that you don't deserve to take on the burden of that, I do feel like you kicked into high gear. And even though it wasn't ideal for you, because with time for a nap, I do feel like this has been somewhat of a burdensome situation because I feel like you're having to pull the weight of two people in a connection where with exchanging gifts here, there should be an equal give and take is what I'm feeling. And so I almost feel like when it comes to, when it comes to, um, getting abundance for you or getting your needs met, I do think sometimes that you may feel like some sacrifices are necessary. Um, and it's almost like with the poised here, the poised card talks about being in this energy of being ready and being like, what's the word for this? Um, feeling worthy. Like the poise card is like this worthiness card. And so I feel like sometimes even though things aren't, it's, there's this energy here where it's like, if it isn't organically working out, like there could be separation or there could be a moment where you have to kind of look at someone for who they are. And even though it's disappointing, kind of accept that. I do feel like there, there's potentially a part of you that wants to kind of fight the natural flow. Cause with the wheel of fortune here, um, yeah, like with the wheel of fortune, it's like, there's this sense that it's like you, it's like with the six of pentacles, it's like there's a part of you that will make up for deficits of the other team. That's what I'm getting in order to get to the goal. So I feel like with the six of wands here, what spirit is saying is that I feel like you're someone who really 
there's a sense of you being like you're you're used to victory i feel like you guys have like a strong willpower um and there's this energy of you almost wanting victory at all costs with this person um regardless of what it asked you to do so long as it didn't it could have tired you out um but as so long as it didn't end up in separation or abandonment it's almost like you were willing to gamble with hand of cards it's like instead of kind of taking the hands that you, the, the cards that you were dealt in the situation, there's this sense of like, keep a positive mindset, manifest exactly what you want. Like, it's almost like your way of manifestation, I think sometimes can be like willpower. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to take it on and um, essentially like take on a lot of the burden and take on a lot of the weight and um disregard whether or not things have been fair disregard that because for you it's almost like winning at all costs but not in like a negative way where it's like you're sabotaging others it's more like you're helping others more than what is useful for that person and so i feel like sometimes um i just feel like there's this energy of like of not accepting um that this person maybe isn't this 10 of cups, you know what I mean? Because, and when I say isn't this 10 of cups, it's more like someone isn't able to be your 10 of cups if you have to pull their weight, you know? 10 of cups talks about a very balanced, emotionally abundant scenario where both parties are contributing to that because the truth is if the 10 of wands comes with the 10 of cups, it's like almost that energy of not even being able to enjoy what you have. And so I just think there's an energy here where where it's like it may be masking this deep fear of disappointment and this deep fear of being abandoned. And it's like even though, I don't know, it's like even though you could it's like with the hangman here, there's a sense of you having been willing to sacrifice whatever, you know what I mean? Almost to, to sacrifice and do whatever it took to protect, to protect your victory with the seven of wands. And so I feel like maybe the only thing that spirit's kind of highlighting to you is that when when something is showing us red flags or showing that it's not the right direction and showing that it essentially doesn't align with our values or what we truly want like the idea of kind of fixing something up to be that it, it just means it won't authentically in our minds we might think that if we just give this person the right amount of energy or the right amount of resources or give them enough, that's going to be a change in their fortune. It's like gambling, for example. So with hand of cards here, it's like having a strategy. It's like, okay, I'm going to put this money down now because I think it's going to bring, bring more towards me in the future. And so it's like willing to gamble with fate or game. It's like you're willing to give to get almost, but I feel like what spirit is saying um, is that, I feel like Spirit's saying there's a difference between um, with the seven of wands here, like fighting for your victory and surrendering whatever at all costs. Like, I, I just feel like there's a sense that I'm trying to put this together. And I know this might be a more difficult message to hear, but I feel like it'll be helpful if you can kind of see, let it sink in because yeah, there's a sense that you what you are sacrificing something, but it's like in your mind, it's worth it because you think it's going to come back like tenfold. But what I'm seeing is, if anything, if there are people in your life that are proving to be either like untrustworthy, inconsistent, um, if they lie, things like that, by giving those people more, it's not going to encourage them to be the better person that you want them to be for the 10 of cups. And so I feel like spirit's trying to say that, um, the way that you're manifesting this makes sense in your head and there is logic to it. I do get it, 
but there is this sense that true abundance comes from being able to let go and being able to understand when a certain opportunity is a no-go because the next opportunity is what you want or another one is. It's about being open and understanding that you don't need to break your back or you don't need to overgive to to carve out what the opportunity you do have to be what you want because that's more in alignment with a fear or scarcity mentality. Um, and it's almost like maybe sometimes there's this thought that giving up on something is not an abundant mentality or letting the accepting a hard truth is not abundant. You know what I mean? But the truth is that is very abundant. And this is kind of making me feel like there's an energy here of like spiritual bypassing, but it's not spiritual. It's more just like bypassing where it's like almost like that energy of um, where where sometimes there's this energy of like keep a positive mindset. Like what's that energy of like false happiness or when people are thinking that the best way to create happiness in their life is to maybe ignore issues and put on like a happy face because that's like never be sad, you know, never, never give in to lack, never give in to sadness. But what that creates is genuinely like this deep lack of, of, a, of an ability to um, pivot in your life in ways that would be really helpful for you. I feel like is what spirit's saying is like, you shouldn't have, yeah, you shouldn't have to break your back. And that's not really going to bring you the 10 of cups. And so what spirit is wanting to tell you is that this 10 of cups that you're looking for with this person is very much available to you, but it does require for you to um, understand that the universe, like with the wheel of fortune here, it's like, I feel like you think it's like you against the world or it's like you, I don't know. There's a sense of trying to not manipulate because that's too strong of a word. It's like, I don't know how to describe it. It's it's a gamble is what I'm trying to say. And with spirit, spirit doesn't ask you to gamble. Spirit doesn't ask you to risk things to get, you know, is what I'm trying to say. And maybe you don't realize that it's a gamble, but it is. And so there's a chance that you'll end up being more disappointed by giving this person a second chance because, you know, it's possible that it goes in that direction. It's also possible it can go in the other direction. But what I'm saying is that like, co-creation with spirit and a belief in abundance involves allowing for a road to close. So the road that actually will bring this 10 of cups effortlessly is available to you. Um, and it's about being mindful of exchanging gifts that any relationship should have, a, a checks and balances. Um, and so I almost feel like spirit is calling you to get a new perspective on what it really looks like to defend your abundance and a part of you maybe thinks that like if you're already in this abundant position or you feel abundant or you're happy in some way and then someone comes in your life and then they bring this they don't align with that or like let's say they do something where it's like with the seven of swords they lie or they do something that isn't in alignment with this ten of cups that you had planned for this person in you um there could be a part of you that wants to thinks that the seven of wands energy. So like, it's almost like you see it as a threat to your victory or a threat to your confidence, a threat to your ability to, to achieve or your ability to succeed. But, but what it is more than anything is it says everything about that person and nothing about you, but there may be a habit you have of like failure as not an option. So it's almost like whatever work I have to put in to get this person in shape, just so like, I know I didn't make the wrong decision or I don't have to face the fact that sometimes people are disappointing or like, and it may even be that a part of you is needs to just work through that, that you would benefit from work with this self-indulgence, self-work, shadow work. I feel like something in your shadow is thinking that someone not meeting your expectations or someone not treating you the way you deserve to be treated says something negative about you and what you're deserving of. And I think because that's such an uncomfortable thought for you, I feel like you don't even want to go there and work through what conclusion you could get to. Because if you go a layer deeper, what you'll realize is, okay, yes, it does trigger feelings of not being worthy enough. And yeah, I really did want it to work out. But through sitting with that feeling and that disappointment, we come to the conclusion that, that 
a statement of your abundance, a statement of what you deserve actually is letting this, this opportunity go and is stating to the universe that this, that you, um, loving yourself means not accepting this. It means not, not taking responsibility for this. It means not teaming up with this anymore. You know, this energy that isn't equal give and take with you, this energy that, yeah. And it's recognizing that with this poise card here, this talks about being ready and being confident. And so there's lack of confidence with not enough here. Spirit is just saying there, you don't need, what I'm trying to say is it can take us in circles and be such an extra, you, you can be more abundant than gambling. You can be more abundant. Our fear-based mentality tells us that keeps us away from our shadows and keeps us away from actually looking at what we're afraid of here and keeps us in a reality that isn't actually real or isn't true. And so I feel like you may use like what your resources, your energy, your money, your whatever it is to try to offset the changes that the universe bring in. But it's almost like spirit trying to tell you that you don't need to do that because if anything, you might be sabotaging yourself. You might be keeping something in your life that spirit wanted to take out of your life. Like spirit could have exposed a lie about this person on purpose because they know you're worth more than that. You know what I mean? Because this, the universe wanted to give you an opportunity to defend your who you are and like defend your pride, you know? Because with the seven of, pen, seven of wands here, this is about knowing what your values are and, and knowing what does not belong in your garden, basically. And I feel like for you, you, you may be thinking that you may be skipping this step where it's like, there's this energy here where it would help you to understand that, um, high value people and people that are very abundant or have a, an abundant life, abundant mentality, still run into people that are that are shady. It's not that you never run into that again. You know what I mean? It, it's it's that you have discernment about it. So I feel like there may be a belief here that um, I don't know that like you shouldn't attract people that are like this. And so then the fact you did is like a statement on a lack of abundance. But if anything, it's it's that, no, you'll continue to interact with all different kinds of people. Um, it's more about understanding what your value is. And, and the way that you establish that is, for example, once you see someone acting a way that does not meet your worth, you cut that out. That's a statement of value. It, it doesn't mean that that meant something about you, that this per there's always going to be people that don't see your worth or don't, yeah, that don't serve you, basically. And I feel like instead of um, like giving yourself time to like recover from this, I almost feel like there was this false sense of jumping straight back into like keep a positive mindset. And I'm seeing this similarity here between these these two girls. And so I almost feel like there was this kind of energy here where like I'm actually going to read it um, from the book a little bit too because there's a certain message I can think of that, um, I think would serve you to hear. So it says, um, with 48. Okay. So it says you're not ready to move forward at this time. And that has to be okay. <laughs> like be poised in the face of demands and deadlines, pretending, you know, what you're doing works sometimes. And that's that, that's that gambling energy, right? Like, like almost a part of you didn't think that you had the right means to move forward. I feel like a part of you knew that there was a hole in this dynamic or this strategy. You knew that, but there was a part of you that wanted to push it anyways. So it says, um, but if you adopt a fake it till you make it attitude, it will land you in some muck now. This is not a time to wing it and deliver something half finished. It's okay to postpone things until you're ready. It's better to disappoint others now than to wish you had later. And so, yeah, there's just a sense here that that it was like, I'm even getting an energy, like what this is reminding me of is like in movie or like not in movies, but like in war, when like a certain leader, there's a clear sign that there's going to be 
like everyone is going to get killed if you move forward. You know, in the movies when that happens and like I'm, it happened in real life too, but there's a certain moment where there's two armies going against each other and the commander in chief, and I see you in this position of like being like, you have a, like there's a certain like confidence to you or something like that, but there's a sense that, um, so in my example, it's like, there's two, there's two opposing armies. And the second that there's evidence that it's not going to go well for your army, AKA the 10 of cups, isn't maybe going to happen or something. Um, a lot of commanders will be like charge anyways. And there's always that moment where everyone is like swallowing and just like, Oh my gosh, like, please don't make us do this. But it's that stubbornness of like the chariot, like go ahead. Like we're going to do it. Like, there's no, whatever we have to sacrifice, we're going to sacrifice. Um, you know what I mean? And, and, and I'm not saying that it's like, oh, you're leading. It, it's, it's more like within your own life, you're doing that to yourself. You know, it's like, that's kind of your own mentality with your own energy. And so there's kind of a self, um, a lack of self-love there. You know what I mean? To make yourself battle out or to not take time to process it or to ch still try to have victory anyways, to take on the burden of this other situation um, all in the name of like a victory. And it's like, I feel like you see that as the right move, but in this case, keeping a positive mindset and just winging it and, and just trying to go for what you want anyways, without ignoring legitimate constraints is almost what I'm getting is going to lead to destruction. And I don't think it's going to bring the outcome that you want. And so if you're in this stage still where you really want to give this situation a second chance you don't want to admit defeat understand why it is that you don't want to admit defeat and understand that there's probably lies in regards to how that makes you feel because some, sometimes it can be triggering you know what i mean to have to admit defeat or to stop and have to pick a new path it it, it can be a blow to our egos and it can be scary because we don't want to be alone we don't want to have to go down a new path but there's a sense that it could be it would be unwise recognize that this is a gamble recognize that you don't have as much control as you maybe think you do recognize that maybe there's an opportunity there's a chance that you could give everything you have you could wear yourself out and still be defeated and still be disappointed and you'd be go right back to um where you were you know and then it's like you expended all this energy and so i think you're in a situation like that right now and so spirit just wants to highlight it to you and and help you understand that you can, you will be able to move through this orphaned energy. I want to read you the orphaned energy. It says, we were all meant to have connections with other people within our family, society, and the larger culture. No man is an island. And it's important to recognize that when being a part of rather than being separate from is essential to your well-being. The issue at hand is the need to find where you fit be true to your core truths and values that that's what i'm getting from the seven of wands right perhaps you no longer identify with a group or community the way you did before and need to find a new situation you may be feeling a deep sense of loss or confusion address the need for belonging and know that you will find your place with others of like mind and spirit it's okay to let go of the pressure to fit in not everyone will understand you it's time to move on and so yeah i'm just really getting this energy of, of not wanting of because of that feeling that it's giving you, I feel like it's giving you this energy of not enough, you know? It's making you feel like, I don't know, like, like in order to get what you want, you, you have to like fight for it or something, which, which I understand. Um, and I'm not judging whatsoever. I'm just hoping that you can kind of heed the advice and, and maybe see where this is, um, like, this is a this you it could you could make it easier on yourself is is what i would want to say so um spirit can you clarify this energy with advice here it says it is now safe to let go of the survival mechanism of taking on others emotional reactions and responses it says i choose to remember when i allow others to own the way they feel about what they perceive is happening I free up energy to focus on my own perception, empowering myself to act from truth so that I may direct my own experience. Yeah, there's an energy here of, like, it's almost like you feel like another person having maybe a disappointing reaction or, or not having the same values as you is something that you need to take on or take responsibility for or fix, you know what I mean? There, there's energy of that. So, so I would definitely look out for that. It says, 
Um, it is now safe to acknowledge my fear of abandonment and the experience of being alone. I choose to remember that when I give myself permission to validate my fear of standing alone, I may then choose to prioritize myself and create myself, create in myself a loyal companion through which I may have all my needs met. And yeah, there's an energy here of spirit is, is trying to highlight that this is an opportunity to be your own loyal companion and to stand for your truths and to not, to not think that something not working out for you or a relationship not being aligned with you or a community, a situation not being aligned with you um, is something so threatening that you're not willing to be there for yourself, you know, that for your authentic self and your authentic values. All right, let's get one more and then we'll go into the extended. It says, I forgive myself for taking myself more seriously than is helpful to me. I choose to believe that when I allow myself to lighten up, my entire being becomes illuminated with the intuitive wisdom that aligns me with my highest potential. So again, there, and it's the genius. And so there is this sense of like losing control in the situation and almost feeling like it's do or die. Like there's a certain intensity to this in a sense of honor, like, like needing to defend, like needing to succeed in order to defend your honor or your, your self image or something like that. Um, and then we also have, I forgive myself for distrusting others um, to be able to take care of themselves. I choose to believe that when I delegate tasks and make space for growth, I empower others to experience parts of themselves not previously known to them. And this is really that element of, um, this is that element of wanting to take on the extra weight and thinking that that's a, a genuinely good solution to creating happiness but what spirit's highlighting is that in order to create true stable happiness there is a need to um be in connections that are very equal and to also move away from connections that are sh sh have been shown to be unreliable or not um not in alignment with you and recognizing that when something is not in alignment with you it definitely is not an insult or it does not mean that you are not abundant or capable and it doesn't mean anything about you, you know? Um, yeah. So I hope that makes sense. All right. So now I want to see how long I've been recording. I don't even know. 38. Wow. This is a long reading. Um, okay. We're going to look at what we're going to go into for the extended now. All right. What should we go into for the extended reading? We have the two of pentacles, temperance. It's about finding balance, um, how, to, how to move forward, prioritizing your responsibilities, eight of swords, which we talk about in the extended reading. It's like freeing yourself from, um, yeah, king of torches. Queen of Swords. Okay. Um, I feel like what we're going to go into for the extended reading is we're going to be looking at how, how can you manifest what you want in regards to this Ten of Cups or in this situation, what is the best route to manifest what you want and take control of the situation without creating a little prison for yourself. So we're just going to get advice on how to best move forward, how to prioritize the situation and additional advice on to how, how to move forward here. So especially for those of you that are like, okay, well, like I'm hearing what you're saying, but like, what else do I do in this situation? Is it just walk away? Like, I don't know if I just want to walk away. Um, we're going to come to a balance, the most balanced way forward. Um, and one where you're not bound to something or trapped how can you empower yourself in this situation is what we're going to look at. So if that's useful for you guys, I will have it linked down below. Um, but without further ado, um, this is the end of the YouTube reading. Thank you so much for being here. If it did resonate, please hit the like button. It really does support my videos, my channel. Um, leave a comment, I, especially for this one. I would love to see if you guys resonate with this or anything else. I know this is a tougher topic, so I definitely understand. Um, if it wasn't the greatest to hear, but I am very curious about your guys' feedback and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next big card reading. And I hope to connect with you again sometime soon.